Hey guys, it's Nadia from Leadia Designs here and we're ready to start our very first project. So what we're going to be making is similar to this board here. It's a cheese board or a serving board with a very simple but elegant pour on it. We're going to pour a base layer and then we're going to just pour some glitter or some other colors on top in strands so this way it gives some really cool interest to it. We'll also be using the heat gun uh, just to kind of move the resin around a bit so get some cool effects. But to get started, I'm just going to quickly walk you through um, the products I'm going to be using for this video and then we're going to cut away from the long shot and we're going to get you close-ups to show you while I'm working um, each different element of the, the process as well as kind of give a little bit of an explanation explanations as we go through. So um, also while you're watching please keep in mind that I might be taking off my mask to be able to speak to you about what's going on but really you should be wearing your mask your gloves goggles if you have them and if again you might not be able to see it but i have my industrial fan uh, exhaust fan running here so some sort of ventilation running in the room that you're doing resident at all times like i said i won't i'm gonna have to pause in between to to take off my mask and talk to you guys during that part uh, through certain parts of the video but please you guys stay safe okay what we're going to do in terms of the proportions of, of resin there are calculators online to help you to figure out how much resin you're going to need for a certain piece that you're trying to cover um, in this case because we're only doing a strip here i can average it out a little bit so generally speaking i don't do a huge amount of calculation i have a basic idea from you know repetitively making certain types of projects so cheese boards and posters and canvases I generally know or even the trays I generally know how much resin I'm going to need and I usually err on the side of a little bit extra because I hate running out in the middle of a project and having to create more resin and even if you do that sometimes you don't get the same effect because the resins are already starting to cure or starting to kind of dry out so you want to make sure all your resin is kind of at the same point uh, unless you're going for a certain effect and you know then sometimes the results are unpredictable. But in this case, we're going to try to, because we're just doing a strip here, I'm going to be mixing up about eight ounces, maybe a little bit more of resin. And then again, you'll just have to try to figure out how you want to split up your colors. So for me, I'm going to be making the base, part, the first part of the pour black, and then I'm going to be pouring all the other colors on top of that. So even though there's going to be a lot of black for the base by the time we're done, there's going to be a majority of the other colors that are layered on top of it. So you just want to kind of sometimes pre-plan, get a general idea of how you think you want it to go. Keeping in mind, resin is generally very unpredictable, especially when you're first starting out. So it's just great to just go in with an open mind, experiment, have fun with it, and then just see what happens. But um, so with that being said, we're going to, I'm going to cut away here and we're going to start going through each step individually. All right, let's go. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to prep our board. So this is a finished board that I bought from the store. So it already has a varnish, it's been sanded down, it has a beautiful finish on it. And all we're going to do is just tape it on the back so this way it just prevents the, any resin that's pouring over the sides from having creating drips along the bottom that we're going to have to scrape off. So we, we're going to just put some tuck tape on here. Um, I like the tuck tape on finished boards just because it holds better. I find that um, painter's tape or masking tape doesn't hold as well when the boards have a finished varnish to them. And also because they have a finished varnish to them, we're not going to be needing to do a varnish or a base layer or an acrylic layer underneath it just because the resin is going, is, is going to just float on top just fine. It's not porous. There's not any bubbles that are going to be popping up through um, a porous material like unfinished wood. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and take care of that and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that we have our board taped up, we're going to want to prep it, uh, continue prepping it by putting it on um, the the, the, sur the surface that we're going to be pouring on. So in this case, it's going to be the silicone mat that I have. And I have these canisters that I'm just recycling by 
uh, using them to prop up our board. So this way when the resin is poured and it pours down the sides, it's not going to create a puddle underneath our board. It's actually going to drip down. <clears throat> so we're taking our board and we're going to put it on here. Now, a very important step now is to just double check the level. My countertop here is level, but sometimes between you know the, the canisters or the board itself or just something has shifted it's not always level so what we're going to do is going to double check so we're going to check horizontally this way and we'll see that it's quite level this way and then we're going to check on the vertical uh, plane here and we're going to see that it's slightly off and if we were to lift the board just a little bit this way then it would get level so my little trick is is i take folded up paper towels, just little pieces, and I stick them on top of the canister between the board and the top of the canister there. And I just want to make sure it's way under. And then that, you know, generally speaking, gets us pretty level. All right, so once we have that ready to go, then we're pretty much set. And we should start mixing up our resin. So let's move on. We're going to be mixing up about eight ounces of resin for this project. So because it's a one-to-one, -one, it's going to be four ounces of the hardener and then four ounces of the resin. Generally speaking, you always want to pour your hardener in before your resin and you want to get that mixed up. Again, you want to make sure that your resin is at least room temperature, um, sometimes slightly warmer, just so that it minimizes any bubbles. I, I work in my basement, so I have a heater running uh, close to where the... Um, in the same vicinity as where I keep the resin. So this way the, that area is a little bit warmer than the rest of the room and it seems to help. Um, once we have our eight ounces, we're gonna pour half of it, so four ounces of it into the cup that's gonna have black. And then I'm gonna disperse evenly uh, an ounce each to each of the other cups for the, all the other colors. When you're mixing powders, you wanna make sure you're putting your powder in before um, the resin goes in just to kind of minimize the disbursement of the pigment, the mica powder. And then with um, glitter, not as much to worry about, but then again, with in paste, again, not as much to worry about because um, it's already in a liquid form. So this way it's not gonna create that little poof of cloud. Um, all right, so let's go into speed mode and get this started. Okay, so we are, we've got all of our resin mixed up now and we've um, got our board back onto the mat. Um, I ended up flipping it around just so that I can pour on this side since I'm right-handed and this way it'll be easier for you guys to watch. Um, interesting note though is when I flipped it around, it turns out the board is actually the thing that's not level. So I had to switch where I had put the tissue as you saw earlier in the video. So now this side has been raised and that side is not. So, and you can see that we are level again we're just going to check again so we're level this way and this way all right so let's go into again another speed mode and i can show you how we're going to pour and then add the details all righty here we go
Okay, so I decided to pause the video here so that we can, uh, you can see that I've put down, just finished putting down that black layer and it's still very wet. And you'll also notice that I took my popsicle stick and I just made sure that we had resin, the black resin along the edges as well. Um, that just kind of helps to, you know, the next colors that are going to go on just to make sure they're all going to flow over the edges nicely. Um, this edge, the edge of this board does have a very sharp edge. So there is going to, it's not going to be a hundred percent on the edges where we're going to have um, a complete coverage of the resin on the sides, just because it gets kind of cut. Um, the resin kind of will pool on top of the sharp edge and then it'll drip down on the sides, but it's pretty good. So, um, and I can show you how in next, the next video, how I fix um, things like that as well um, after everything is dry. But for now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start pouring the other colors. So the one thing you're going to want to do, and again, we'll go into speed mode, but I just wanted to quickly show you first um, the technique. So we're going to have our cup. And again, I apologize for this glare that's here. It's my light. I can't really do much about it because it's above me. But um, so we're going to take our cup. And the reason why I really like paper cups is we can do this little foldy bit on here. And then we're just going to very carefully pour and there's no right or wrong here so you just kind of pour as you feel looks nice so in this case I want there to be a lot of the green covering the black so I'm going to pour a lot of the green over the black and in I really like you know waves and swirls and things like that. You'll notice here we got a really kind of a neat texture. So if you want to do something like that, you just want to pour a little bit of a finer amount, just a little bit more slowly, and it just allows the resin to kind of twirl as it's coming out. So, so there we go. And now I'll do the rest of the colors. All right, here we go. Okay, so um, we now have uh, poured out pretty much all of the colors. And again, I just did a really simple um, wave kind of pattern here where we're just free flowing and just seeing where um, the colors kind of want to land and how we want to fill those in. Um, if you prefer to do uh, less wavy or just straighter lines or just thicker bands of lines, there's lots of options here for that, but basically it's the same technique of just pouring. Um, so you could technically, you could, if you like the look of this, you could actually leave your resin like this now um, to just kind of settle and it will kind of spread a little bit, but it will generally, you know, settle with these um, really cute little lines in them. Or um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how I use the heat gun and we can just move the colors a little bit. Okay, so here's the heat gun. And what we're going to do, I put up, I have it on high heat. And what we're just going to do is we're going to just do a quick overpass over the colors just to kind of get a lot of those bubbles out. And then we'll go a little bit closer and slower to just do a bit of blending. The more heat you add to it, the more the colors will start to blend together. So you can, you have control over that. Okay guys, so I moved the, the board over a little bit just because that glare was a little bit too crazy. So, um, so we've uh, put, add a little bit of heat to this and you can see the cow, as the more heat you add, the more the colors will start to blend. So you can decide how much or how little of that 
works for you. I'm gonna blend this a little bit more just because we have so much blending happening in here. And then um, if there's any leftover resin, we'll add a few more details. Okay, so I've blended this a little bit more. So as you can see, it ends up taking on a really cool look once you start blending it. Um, again, you can determine which you like better, if you like the blended look better, or if you like when we had those crisp lines with glitter. Um, both can work really well depending on the style and the look that you're going for. I think this looks really neat. Um, now, if we do have any glitter left over, um, like so for here, we have a little bit of this gold left over. We can actually come back in and, you know, add a few more details that maybe we are not going to blend out, but so that we have them um, in here as well. So you can just kind of decide where you think it looks good. So I, sometimes I just like to follow, you know, some of the natural lines that are happening. All right, so there we go. So I've added a little bit more of the shimmery gold that I had left over into the piece now. So we have a little bit of definition, um, almost kind of that marbling type effect happening here. So I think for me, this looks like it's done. You don't need to heat it again because we've um, taken care of all the bubbles when we heated it the first time. Um, and uh, like I said, the glitter didn't really have any bubbles in it. If it did, you could have gone through and just double checked, but I think that we're good with this. Now, if you want to, from this point on, you could leave it like this, uh, especially if you're using art resin, um, you can leave it like this because it is, again, um, food grade. Whereas um, any other resins, just double check to see if it's food safe, non-toxic, things like that. If it needs if it isn't and then you want to put another coat on top of it just for that extra protection um, put a coat of art resin on it just to kind of protect it so this way um you know we don't have to worry about contact of food onto the piece um also what i recommend to a lot of our my customers who might be a little bit concerned is if they're going to plan on using the piece some people don't some people only use them for display but if they plan on using it for food they can actually cover it with like um, parchment paper or cling wrap or something else that's just gonna either both protect the design and um, just eliminate the chance of any, you know, um, contamination from the, from the resin onto the food. So just so you have that option as well. But like I said, in a lot of cases, people are just using these as decoration for their kitchen. So just know what it is and just be honest with your customers of what you created it for. And then this way they all know how to use it properly. Um, okay, and the one more thing I wanna show you is what I do with all the excess. So in this case, when I do a pour, um, there's, I'm just gonna quickly lift this up. So you'll see there's a lot of resin that actually poured off the edges. And what I like to do with that is I usually will have a mold left, um, just kind of waiting around. So in this case, it's, um, I have these little lotus molds and what I do is I'll take the excess resin and I'll pour it, I'll pick it up off of the mat and I'll pour it into this mold and it'll make some really cool little um, coaster molds for that as um, coasters for that as well and I give these usually give these away to the customers who actually ordered the board so this way they have a little keepsake on top of the piece that they ordered You guys enjoyed that tutorial um, just to finish off um, what we what I normally like to do is I like to keep and recycle my cups so I will let them dry face up sitting up like this and this way the resin will dry along the bottom and then the next time I want to use it I can just pour um, 
you know, the next colors I want to use into it. And I actually am just kind of try to use them a bunch of times before I have to toss them out. And same thing with our measuring cup. I usually lean it to the side. So this way the resin dries on the side of it on the inside. And then I can usually um, just kind of um, pull it out once it's fully cured in there. And then, because if you leave the resin, if you leave the measuring cup to sit up straight, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up with a layer of resin that's going to just mess, you know, mess up the rest of your measurements when you try to use the cup again. But if it's on the side, you can just pull it out. It's a little easier that way. Um, so the last thing that's left to do is to cover your piece. Now, um, if you have, like I actually had my husband pick up these bins for me a long time ago just because um, you can use card cardboard boxes, you can use, you know, um, some people make little tents for their, for their resin uh, pieces and things like that. I like this bin because it's large and if I cover my piece with it like this, um, I can still see it on the inside and I love that because sometimes you just want to keep an eye on your resin just to see what's going on. It's like your little baby in there and you want to keep an eye on it and make sure it's okay and everything is going well with it. So I like having it being clear. So you need one that's going to be big enough that's going to cover and not touch any of the resin along the sides or disturb your piece in any kind of way. So this size is pretty large and it's perfect for what I need. But anyways, this will just keep protecting it from dust and you can keep it under here for however long it needs to be to, for your resin to cure. So in my case, in about 12 hours or less, this will be, you know, ready. I mean, it's touch dry in about five to, you know, four to five hours. So if I need to add another layer or if I want to add anything else to it, I could do that within four to five hours. But in this case, this piece is pretty much done. So I'll leave it for the full 12 hours to, to cure and then um, once it's fully dry, I'll just go through and pull off all the tape. Um, if you guys like, I can do another video um, just to kind of show you at the end of it all, once this is fully cured, how the tape comes off. Um, I mean, I, I know there's a lot of videos out there that are showing how people can remove tape, but if you'd like me to do one, let me know, in the, you know, comment on the post on the video and let me know that that's what you want and I'll create one for you. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned lots from it and that you love what you created from this video. I'd love to see it. So if you do create something, please tag me on Instagram at Leah Dia Designs and, and let me know that you, you know, what you thought of this video and uh, show me what you create. All right. Thank you guys so much. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.